Welcome, everyone. Here's a piece I found in Education Week uh, from September 25th. Uh, here's the here's the link to the article. It's a brief one. Um, you don't have to you don't have to memorize this. I will have a link in the in the video's description. Uh, so let's just go through it. So the headline is "Aid for Children Drops and May Get Worse." <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so federal spending on children has taken a dive just below 2% of the count, uh, country's gross domestic product, the lowest level in a decade. Uh, that's one big conclusion drawn from a new Urban Institute report on federal spending aimed at children, including education, health care, nutrition, and various tax benefits. The report also found that total federal spending on those younger than 19 was $6,200 in 2018, which also represented a decline from previous years. In contrast, the share of the federal budget dedicated to children nearly doubled from 5.4% to 10.6% between 1990 and 2010. One bright spot Kids Share 2019 report on federal expenditures on children through 2018 and future projections show the share of federal aid targeted at children from low-income families has grown recently, reaching 61% of such spending in 2018. Uh, the organization forecasts a gloomier outlook for fans of Washington spending on kids in the next decade. In 2029, interest payments on the national debt are expected to significantly outpace federal spending on children. Uh, even now, federal outlays for kids only outpace interest payments by just over a percentage point. The share of the budget dedicated to children will also get squeezed by the growth of mandatory spending on programs like Social Security and Medicare. Meanwhile, K-12 outlays are projected to fall from $41 billion in 2018 to $36 billion in 2029. Only mandatory health spending on children is projected to grow over the next decade. Uh, during the Trump administration, the U.S. Department of Education's budget has grown slightly in nominal dollars. All bets are off, however, if another downturn hits the economy. All right, so let's go through this. Uh, you know, what I find interesting and uh, somewhat promising about this article is it addresses something I've been talking about for several years, and I even uploaded a video about it uh, quite some time ago. So I'm talking about the national debt and its impact on federal grants. Uh, and the, the key points in this, entire, um, in this entire article are where I underlined uh, interest payments on the national debt are expected to significantly outpace spending on children, and the share of the budget dedicated to children will also get squeezed by the growth of mandatory spending on programs like Social Security and Medicare. Well, now, while this article's focus is on federal spending on children, you can replace that with almost any discretionary spending area you want, whether it's education, transportation, law enforcement, national parks, and so on. So let's go back up. Excuse me. Excuse me again, actually. Let's go back up and look at their chart again. You know, notice how over time the share of mandatory, mandatory spending, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and the debt. So, so this dark blue one here is the uh, Medicare and Medicaid. And that just keeps going up and up and up over time. Same with interest on the debt, kind of this uh, 
golden. Is that golden or is it more orange? Well, whatever. Okay. But you'll notice that that kind of continues to increase over time. A little hard to tell here, but when you combine <clears throat> the mandatory with the interest on the debt, you're looking at a huge portion of the actual federal budget. Uh, so as that increases over time, you know, and the, the process is it's squeezing out. So the interest on the debt and the Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security is squeezing out the discretionary budget categories, uh, whether it's defense or everything else. And everything else includes education, agriculture, you know, all the federal departments, uh, the legislative and the judicial branches. So as of right now, as of right now, when you look at Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, <clears throat> and interest on the debt, that's about two-thirds of the federal budget uh, that goes towards mandatory expenses. Uh, you know, and this isn't going to change anytime soon. I mean, this graph here, the graph I did for for the video that I made a while back shows exactly the same thing. Um, the, the, the spending on these mandatory programs is going to continue increasing, w you know, without, you know, unless there are reforms uh, to those entitlement programs or if there's, you know, an actual reduction of overall spending. So what, is this, what does this all mean? Okay, if your organization relies significantly on federal grants, you know, it's really time to start diversifying your funding. Uh, discretionary federal grants, you know, they'll still be around for quite a while, but it's a good idea to reduce, uh, to reduce your reliance on them, you know, especially if you are looking at, you know, more than 50, 60, or 70 percent of your funding comes from federal sources. Um, you know, at least... at least try to try to balance out all your funding sources so you're not you know de really heavily dependent upon one single funder and i know that's not an easy task but if you want to position uh, your organization for long-term financial st uh, stability it's it's going to be absolutely essential okay well that's my news and commentary for the day. If you enjoyed this, feel free to give it a thumbs up or like it or whatever the option is on your screen. Uh, it, of course, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when the next video is uploaded. And uh, yeah, that'll do it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.